You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That rock and tune means it's time to rock out. With the option block, my name is Mark Longo from the old optionsinsider.com. Hopefully you're on it right now, maybe listening to this fine program, perusing all of our great content, breaking news on the options market, education, analysis, unusual activity, all that good stuff. It's got a great archive there going back 11 years now. Yes, this January is 11 years. Hard to, hard to fathom it. So head on over there. Maybe type some, something crazy into the search field. See what comes up. Chances are we got something on it over the last 11 years. So uh, you might be surprised. Little treasure hunts. I'm working on some interesting ways to, to make that stuff, you know, forward and make it front-facing to you a little bit more. We have such a, just like I said, crazy, crazy back catalog there. Ar- archive slash database slash call it what you will. We're figuring out some interesting ways to, to bring it front-facing to you guys again and make it fun. Of course, the archives are always there for the radio as well, as well as, of course, all the other platforms of your choice, including... For you crazy among you who really want to hear it, in your ear holes instantly, got you covered. Mixler every Monday and Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, via the old Mixlers, M-I-X-L-R. Grab that link, set it, and forget it. Join us. I think you're going to like it. Of course, however you listen, live after the fact, hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, slanders against Uncle Mike. We'll take them all, except maybe that last part. (laughs) We do like to hear from you guys and joining me on the program today let's see who we got on the old option block all-star panel wheel today i will spin it and see who comes up oh the first name coming up on my roulette wheel today is none other than the aforementioned four besmirched uncle mike tusa from rcm wealth advice uncle mike welcome back to the show you haven't even been on yet i'm sure you're already taking some umbrage i think i should who's slandering me i don't i don't even i never knew anyone would slander me I don't know, sir. You never know. The crazies come out of the woodwork when you start talking. Uh, not our listeners. That's true. We got some. We got a good bunch out there. They're a hardy bunch and relatively low uh, on the crazy scale. <laughs> I've been interacting with them for oh, 11 years now, and most of them are fairly normal. We got a few out there who might take it to the extreme, but uh, for the most part, fairly normal bunch, which is always appreciated in any sort of uh, online audience. I can't speak for this guy's audience, though. Who knows who listens to this guy? You got to be crazy. I am joined, of course. By the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. I have heard listeners. I have heard good things though about his uh, his Vix made impossibly difficult to understand webinar series. People just flooding to that en mass. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program, sir. I. Uh, you know what's funny is you you say stuff like Vix made easy, and then everybody thinks that it's easy. However, if you took my class, you would have been on the right side of this move in Vix. You know, just um, magically, because the class helps you look at things the right way. But I, I digress. I digress. Um, so uh, anyway, still our most popular selling, and it's flying off the shelves. And I'm going to do a VXX Made Easy uh, coming up soon. With um, That actually isn't a bad subject for us to talk about today, because uh, they're listing a new product, VXXB. I don't know if you're doing that on Volviews or not, but... Um, but things are good. Uh, Maine is frozen again, and my ice rink is back, so I'm happy. 
<laughs> yeah, I can do your VXX made easy in like 30 seconds if you want. Uh, buy a like a two year, like 30, 40% of the money put, set it and forget it. Uh, there you go. You're done. Got VX, VXX made easy in, in 30 seconds. I saved you guys a lot of time. All right. Well, that's that's the short version, the Cliff Notes version. Let's keep on rolling into the longer version, which is also known as the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, trade. <laughs> I almost said trail block. I got a bunch of things on the old brain coming out at once. The old trading block, welcome indeed to the portion of the show where we break down, you know, what was trading. And as the Rock Lobster alluded to, a lot of things were trading uh, today. A pretty active day out there. Let's start with the major indices, as we are wont to do. S&P leading the charge ever so slightly to the downside, finishing the day off nearly three quarters of a percent or so. Uh, the, excuse me, the Dow, uh, the laggard, the kind of the Goldilocks actually of the bunch today, usually, usually the laggard today, a bit of an in-between, only off a, a, a mere six-tenths. Uh, of a percent and the Q's finish off the day right around half a percent to the downside. So take your pick, pick your poison, which indice you had <laughs> more, more to the downside to your liking. Of course, all of that red on the screen means VIX cash getting a little bit of a green boost up two and a half handles to end the day or so, or dare I say it, dare I go percent of a percent. Yes. 23%. I went there. I dared. Uh, 23% of a percent, so a big day for VIX Cash. Not too good for my Vol Views prognostication. We were kind of all fighting for the downside there. A couple people on the upside, most people on the downside there last week, but we shall. We'll get to that later this week. Plenty of time for that prognostication to play out. End in the day, pretty much on, near, on or right near the highs. I think 1362 was pretty close. Let's see, what's the actual interest? Oh, 1372, so excuse me, a tenth of a handle off of the highs. But still impressive numbers, impressive levels, levels of vol that we have not seen in some time. Mr. Rock Lobster, let's start there because I know you like to make the VIX more difficult than it needs to be, hence your webinar title. But yeah, these, these levels, 13 and change in VIX, I don't know what to do with myself with all of this volatility out here. I can't even wrap my head around it. These levels are so lofty, sir. What should I do? Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> I think um, we are going to make VIX made easy. I'm just going to throw a date at you. I'm going to throw 1996 or 1995, actually 94, right, where um, – So I was four years old, but continue. Yes, you were, you were a toddler. <laughs> I was a babe in the woods. <laughs> I think Tucson was running over people in high school football. But anyway, um, in the in those in that faraway uh, time when we kind of had this you know, straight up rally um, in those days at the money vol at 13 percent, like peop, uh, the SPX pit would sell it, sell quite a bit. Um, it ended up that long term capital sold a lot of it at that level four years later. Or I heard that worked out pretty well for them. It did. <laughs> uh, however, the, the SPX traders uh, also can change their mind really fast. <laughs> so what they do is they pull the skew up. They say, screw it. This fall is going up. And if I have to sell more, uh, we're going to make people pay for it. So they adjust very quickly. Right. Um, and what we've been seeing is just this market going straight up. And when to me, you know, as a vol market maker, trader, whatever I was or am, um, when both sides are really in play for the SPX, um, meaning the upside now is moving as hard as everybody's afraid that the downside will, it's very hard for Vic, the bid for VIX to go away. And that's where we are. So, and I just, I remember statistically, you know, getting run over on, di you know, on weeks like this. We just keep rallying and rallying and vol keeps going up because just the moves on the upside are relatively big. And that's what we're having. Those big upside moves, you know, if we have more good earnings, the fact that Netflix is up another 38 bucks after earnings, after it rallied, what, $25 on the day it had earnings. So it's up $65 or something like that in, what, a week? You know, the, the seven or eight days after earnings, just massive rally. So those kind of numbers, right, when you see stuff like that and you're trading and you're looking at the SPX – and all of a sudden, you know, 1% move and 1.5% move over a two-day period doesn't look too big anymore. And all of a sudden, um, it looks very possible, and it's very hard to price that at a 10 VIX, right, because everything's just moving too much. So Mr. Schlesinger would be really happy. This is a realized vol 
the fact realize of all is going up even though the market is going up that's what it is vix has a very hard time coming in for all of the reasons that i have said before um the expectation of higher realize of all is there as well so it is really tough um it is tough for it to come down and that's why most of you know our vol newsletter trades that we've been putting out have been and we were, we talked on the show i talked on a two saw last week long vix long spx <laughs> Let it go, because you can't you can't fight. Uh, you want to own gamma. You cannot fight it. This would be a time where Mr. Schlesinger, I think, would say, "This is the time not to sell options." And a rare um, time for him. But yes, I, I think he probably would be leaning it, on that. Exactly, <laughs> and it's rare. And I'm sure we'll get the note. He'll either confirm or deny. Um, but, <laughs> I don't know if he mainlines option block. I know he mainlines all the Bob view shows. So if he said it on I, there, he would write to you instantaneously. Uh, I, I know. I literally, if I, if I even if I even got if if I if he allowed me as a writer of option stuff to have any poetic license at all with the Greeks, no, the, there the there hate, is none of that. The, the there daggers will be, that came if, through the, if, the notes. I think the only brutal. thing that would get set him off more than talking about realized or saying something about implied over realized, you know, and comparing it favorably would be if you said Delta was the probability of an option expiring in the money. If you said that, that <laughs> guarantees you a letter. In fact, he has sent me copies of letters he has sent to uh, major publications and authors there, you know, uh, educating them on the actual meaning of Delta. It's been, it's been, it's been interesting. It's uh, uh it's good to have him keeping us honest and making sure that. But anyway, that's again, that is I'm just I see what's I see what's going on. I see the expansion. That's what my answer for it is. Um, and I tell clients, if you're if you're looking to fade VXX and UVXY and all that kind of stuff uh, without an offsetting long uh, and do it, you know, and you have to be smart how you do it. You're just going to you're going to watch all those puts. This will be a time where all those, you know. All your VXX puts a road. I think once earnings start coming out, uh, we have a State of the Union coming, which you never know what's actually going to come out of that. Um, uh, we had earnings, and then you know, I guess the North Koreans now don't want to. Yeah, they're they're actually becoming a negative vol thing because I think they, I guess the sanctions are biting, so they're not doing military exercises or something like that. So it's one of those things where it seems like there should be less vol now but the market is moving so hard we actually have more realized vol and therefore fix is going up so just i it is maybe it's a function of our uh <laughs> the one vol the single digit vol president where everything is the opposite of how it should be. <laughs> everything is the opposite <laughs> dare we say today might be the revenge of realized volatility are we at that point yet i don't know i don't know maybe too early to uh, to crown that but we shall see certainly feels like it in the air i'm looking at it right now it's a, it's a whopping 7.15 30 day realized vol out there i mean when's the last time we had that uh, it's been it's been quite some that that seems in and of itself that seems astronomical levels oh a seven realized vol what am I going to do with myself? Run, hide for the hills, get into the get into the fallout shelter. Things are getting crazy. Speaking of crazy things, when things are crazy, I often turn to St. Charles, Illinois, to calm things back down again, to slow them back down, to bring me back into the realm of reality. Uncle Mike, sir, what was going on in that very real land of St. Charles? It was just crazy. I couldn't handle it. It was so crazy. Oh well, see now now you've 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 shattered my illusions. <laughs> You know, it's funny, you know, and just to kind of add to what you guys are saying about the VIX, I'm just looking at a chart here. I believe that this is one of, in the last year, we're just looking at a quick one-year chart of the VIX. It looks like it's only been at this level, I think, on 20 occasions in the last year. So today was definitely a significant move in the VIX. And uh, like Andrew said, when you get these situations to where um, you have the uh, – market going higher along with the VIX going higher. Uh, what's unique about that is if you are trying to short the VIX and just short the VIX, then you may want to consider having some something long in the market uh, just in case. Uh, so anyway, the main thing, I think the big story of the day is the VIX uh, from what's lighting up the tape because this is very significant in terms of the move with which we had uh, the fact that the S&P 500 is down uh, roughly two thirds of a percent and VIX is up 24 percent or close to 25 percent. Uh, typically with the 10 to 1 ratio that we've talked about on the show before, if the S&P is up 1 percent, VIX is down 10 percent. But uh, this is very significant in terms of uh, of what's going on with things. 
the other thing that I think Andrew did mention that I would agree with is the fact that we have the State of the Union address coming tomorrow night. Uh, the fact that we have uh, all the headlines that we have and all the headline risk with which we have coming out of Washington, uh, the State of the Union is where markets can move. Last year, we rallied right after the State of the Union. Uh, but uh, this could be a sell the news type of thing in that I, I, I don't know what the uh, our president's going to say tomorrow night, but I'd be shocked if he didn't tout the wonderful stock market that we we have at all time highs and uh, things along those lines. Uh, but with that being said, we we've had such a rally so far in the last month that it could be one to where it could be a sell the news type of thing tomorrow night. Who knows? Uh, so that's another thing that's going on. I believe that the anticipation going into the State of the Union address uh, could also be a reason that we have uh, a lot of option buyers out there driving up the volatility in this thing. So we have that. Uh, Apple had a little bit of a pullback today. It looks like they're announcing that they're not going to quite have uh, as great of uh, – news as they had originally thought. So uh, that could just be a decoy with Apple. They might be a, just say, just bring s some other bad news out so that it really rallies on earnings coming up. Uh, and I believe it is this Thursday, but I would ask Mark Longo on that. But uh, Mark's a really honest guy, except uh, when it comes to Apple earnings dates. I was just going to break it down. I thought it's tonight. You didn't know it was tonight. I was about to put it up next on the trading block. The earnings is about to come out. I hope you don't have your trades on already for tonight? Yeah, Mark Longo is, is I will say, a, a, a quite deceptive when it comes to Apple earnings. So we can never trust whatever he says. We can trust a lot of things that he says, but so long as it come, doesn't involve Apple earnings, then the man is just straight. He, he is just the epitome of deceit. By those uh, Apple not of ignorance, puts now, not baby. Not of, of knowledge. Pure deceit when it comes to Apple earnings. So, uh, but... We do have that going on this week, and uh, it should be interesting, the fact that we're coming off of such a huge day on Friday. Uh, we gave most of the markets gave a lot of it back today, uh, and we have the State of the Union coming up tomorrow night. Uh, this could be an interesting week. We'll see where it takes us going into Groundhog Day. Yeah, we got a big week uh, for a lot of different things. You mentioned State of the Union. We mentioned, you know, Super Bowl for all you uh, fans out there. Of course, that's going to add a lot of vol to the market, you know, uh, Philly versus Boston. Huge ball uh, there. But, of course, a lot of you also focusing on earnings. we got a bunch of names coming out later this week. In fact, we asked you guys a poll question about that. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and I know, speaking of getting to things, we touched on this on Vol Views a week or two, I think, whenever we go, when it was announced. Uh, but you, you kind of alluded to them. I think probably today is probably a good day to kind of touch on them again, do a little bit of a deeper dive, Mr. Rock Lossier, because our old friend BXX is having an interesting move. You know, of course, talked about BXX many times. That is... Many of yours out there's favorite ways to play the old VIX, and I had a nice little pop today as well. Not quite the 23% that we saw in the old VIX cash, but still a nice 7.3%. So that's a, putting a little bit of air back in that balloon that has been just steadily eroding like crazy. So many of you write in on an almost daily basis about uh, about how you enjoy that VXX erosion. <laughs> and I was joking a little before, but only a little bit, Mr. Rocklops, when I mentioned buying those long-term puts and set it and forget it. Usually it works out pretty well today. Not so much. But that said, you mentioned there are some new uh, new products in the offing, including VXXB. Like I said, we touched on it a little bit. We didn't have a lot of info at the time uh, over there on Volviews, but now we got a little bit more under our sails here. What is, uh, what, let's maybe explain, we'll start there. Let's explain to our listeners what the heck the difference is between these new bad boys. And also, I know there was a debate last time we talked about them, if they were optionable. Yes, they are optionable. Yes, they are trading for all of you out there who are asking uh, VXXB. Not a ton of paper. Only did, uh, let's see, 73 contracts today. 72 of them calls. But uh, it is optionable for those of you who want to try to split the uprights on those spreads. That said, Mr. Rock, to take it away. Uh, what the heck is this new entrant to the VXX land? I think in this... This is what I'm just reading all the stuff now, but I, I unless I do it thoroughly, but I'm a high level of confidence <laughs> that VXX is just end of lifing their their that note. Um, probably will go down maybe as the worst performing note in history, <laughs> or maybe the best of, uh, of anything. Or well, VXX unless something pretty miraculous happens uh, between now and next January. Um, the old VXX is just going to die. 
uh, it's going to die a, uh, it's just going to go away and um, whatever money is left, I guess, gets paid out to everybody. But the new product will be now VXXB and that will just be the new VXX. As far from what I can tell, it's still doing the same stuff. It's buying the same futures, but it is a new product, but it is the same as the old product for, as far as I can tell right now. So basically, VXX just ceases to exist, exist next January for all those long-term traders. Um, and the product you're going to want to start trading is VXXB, but that probably won't. You know, the, the volume will slowly migrate over as everybody's doing the same thing I do and trying to figure out what the heck VXXB is. So... From what I can read, it's the same product. It's just VXX is going away, never to be seen again uh, after January 2019. So time to roll those juicy uh, Jan 10 puts you guys got in the VX in the Prime Meridian Fund, I should say. Exactly. Uh, roll them out there. And, um, and again, that's not a bad strategy, especially when you have all these market meltdowns, uh, you know, getting stuff bid up and, you know, the vol's moving. So it definitely makes it interesting from that point of view. Um, now that things are moving, but that is what I believe is going to happen with that product. But I'm sure some listeners will come in and correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm, I'm going to say it's a high delta if uh, Schlesinger doesn't get mad at me for saying that. <laughs> I'm going to say it's over 90 right You're now. already using the wrong uh, definition of delta to start the show off here. So you're getting I know, off, I couldn't help off on a bad foot here. So I'm looking, you may want to hold off on that role, Mr. Rock Lobster, because A, they don't have Jan listed, at least not on my screen yet, which is kind of odd. And then B, uh, yeah, some of these spreads may be a little cost prohibitive. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, I'd, maybe, I'd say wait until the liquidity yeah, shows wait up. Wait until a little more volume shows up than 73 contracts. Then you could roll your 200,000 lot that you guys got. For the Prime Meridian Fund over there, but yeah, interesting stuff. You know, and I was joking with you before, but you're right. VXX, it's uh, its history of value annihilation is, is impressive, and may indeed be second to none. How much they uh, they just completely annihilate capital. But for a lot of you out there who who like that sort of thing, like the old erosion, we won't get into the endless debate about what causes that erosion, which has filled many hours on the old Volatility View show. Go check out some of the archive episodes of that program if you wanted some of that. Instead, we got to keep on rolling with the program. It's time to break down a little bit of the old odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Everybody, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we break down all the fun things that uh, you guys like to talk about, including perhaps a few of you <laughs> up in arms or excited or a little bit of both about the prospect of a, uh, a Tesla, nay, a boring company slash Musk flamethrower. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta hand it to this guy. He knows how to get the internet excited, uh, or at least someone on his PR team does, because they thought, what's a what's a great way to raise a little capital for this ridiculous company and also continue to keep our name in the PR cycle? Well, we're going to create a flamethrower. A, I think it's two thousand, five thousand. I forgot how much it's charging for this flamethrower. A limit, only a handful can be bought of this precious flamethrower. Somehow it is legal, I guess, because the. Uh, Yes, because uh, somehow the reach of the flame is not uh, like has to be under a certain length, ten feet or something. Then it's not a prohibited flamethrower. So yes, uh, for all of you out there, we don't have uh, unfortunately not no options on the old uh, on the old boring company flamethrowers. But we do have our old friend Tesla, which continues to trade uh, even today with a stock up two percent. Continues to see action in these far far out of the money, even farther than the Rock Lobsters VXX puts. These are super far out of the money. Uh, Jan twenty nineteen fifty five O puts, which today with the stock flirting with three fifty. Uh, seems ever farther out of the money, ever more less realistic. I mean, what's a flamethrower worth if not at least a 2% pop in the stock? Come on. Flamethrower got to buy you at least that. Uh, 52 contracts of these Jan 2019 50 is going up. Total of 36,000 and change open on that strike. Even more interesting is all the love that continues to flow in for these Jan 20, 2020, excuse me, 50 puts. They are flirting. Only a two lot hitting the tape today, but that pushes them. Hopefully that will push them over the magic 7,000 mark in OI. They were hovering this morning at 6,999, ever so close to, ever so close to just that magical 7,000 number and hitting that in just almost record time. So the love continues for this 50 strike 
here. <laughs> Uh, as we continue to get on, everyone's complaining here. They don't have access. Well, you tell you what, I will take care of you folks. Give me two seconds here. You guys should just see our show chat here, listeners. Full of outrage for me here, full of questions. So there we go. That should make you folks happy. As I continue to roll on into what we're talking about today, going to kick things off, Mr. Rock Lobster, in a favorite area of yours of the old marketplace. This is, of course, uh, the old energy space where we stop a little sojourn by the highway in the market vectors oil services etf ticker symbol oih closing today 28 dollars and nine cents uh, off about a little over two about 2.2 percent it's not a great day here for good old oih uh this one averaging a decent clip about twenty six thousand contracts and change today doing just a little bit under a hundred thousand ninety nine thousand eight hundred and 21 to be precise nearly 11 to 1 calls over puts and that's pretty much where our interest was focused uh today it was and actually it wasn't it was some verticals going up here in good old oih that caught our eye in particular some verticals out in july so let's scroll on down to there there we go uh the it was the july 32 34 a vertical that kind of caught our eye. Went up a couple of different times throughout the day. Pretty decent size. 40,000 on the July 32, 34,000 total on the July 34. Starting off with some big blocks. Uh, going up right around the bid. So it looks like paper may be uh, selling a bit of a stupid, but we shall see. Uh, but the execution is these kind of big things is always funky, always a little bit out of sequence. In fact, the later block went up above the offer. So that always that always tells you what's going on with these things. Uh, 23,000 going up with this of this uh, spread to start the day. Uh, 48 cents on the 34s, 88 cents on the 32 calls as the day went on. Uh, another 10,000 going up of this spread, uh, 48 cents and 85 cents second time. Uh, so uh, interesting trading going up with that initial block there going up there. And an interesting thing too is they went up Oh, about, let's see, about an hour and change apart as well, which is also interesting. So the first kind going up, 23,000. Seems like they're crushing the bid on both of these things. One of them actually way below the bid. Uh, open interest, pretty much non-existent uh, on, uh, on both of these strikes. So all opening paper. Again, a total of nearly 42,000 on the 32s and 34,000 on 34. So a bit of a ratio going up there as well let's look up on a chart here of good oih to see you know how a nice little vertical slash stupid would look here over the past year and oih has had an interesting run as you might imagine given all the action we've seen out there in the energy space of late starting the year last year right around 33 and a half or so dropping as low in late summer down to about 21 and change before kind of bouncing around hitting these levels here right around 28 uh, recently as well. So perhaps it is uh, indeed someone deciding uh, that uh, to spread their deltas across uh, a few different strikes on a bit of a funky ratio. Interesting, if that is indeed the choice. Or perhaps uh, it is something else. Mr. Rock Lobster, what is your spidey sense telling you on these two size strangles, uh, not strangles, stupids slash verticals here in July in your old friend OIH? You know, this is... This is another one where it it's the the paper prints all over the place, so it's hard to figure out uh, what's going on. It, I feel like they're selling the thirty fours, um, but I the it just the way it looks like it's printing. It still looks like they're actual buyers of the spread, and then it goes up again at a at a different time. So it's it's a um, it's a little funky because it goes up 40 cents early on in the day. Uh, underlying uh, was a little bit higher. And then it goes up for, uh, let's see, what is that, 837 cents a little later in the day. So I'm, I'm just thinking that, you know, I think that was kind of a, they hit the bid. Um, and then they kind of traded through the bid again. And I'm thinking just call, sell call sales um you know like like possibly against uh the oih like one of those slingshot trades where you uh, along the underlying and then you sell the spreads to try to generate some dollars uh something like that um 
you know, and with oil kind of rallying, it, it feels like it's a little early to sell July, but I think yield wise, they're thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to make my, I'm going to make my 38.555 cents and, um, and uh, take it to the bank, but it still feels, it, it still feels call sellish into the rally from the way just all the volume printed, but still, uh, it's a tough one. That's what makes it fun. That's why we get the big bucks here, Mr. Rock Lobster. To parse the unparsable to create our own uh, our own phrase here. But you're right. It is a bit of a of a funky one. The execution is weird. A uh, bit of the uh, the ratio is weird. The fact that there's a nice hour or so delay between the chunks. That could have been someone got inspired by the first print and came in. So I want to take the other side of that. Maybe they got facilitated. Maybe it's a desk that facilitated taking someone off in the space. There's a lot of reasons why there could be that gap in between. That's what makes it kind of fun. To parse, read the tea leaves uh, here on the show. Maybe you guys have your own thoughts. Hit us up, as you guys are usually not shy about doing that exact sort of thing. As we move on out of the energy space into the hardcore drinking space, a.k.a. Bud. <laughs> Ticker symbol, of course, B-U-D. Closing today, 113 and a half or so, up about one, one point off. I should say off 1.2. Uh, percent. It's the name that does decent paper, perhaps not as much as you might think. Only about 9,000 contracts a day. Doing 75,000 today, roughly 12 to 1 calls over puts. And once again, our eye of Sauron will be drawn towards the call side of the space. Got a little bit of a funky, call it a calendar, call it a diagonal, call it what you will. It was the March 120, June 125 spread. Uh, going up a uh, decent size on this one. First off, your first blush, you see this going up. It's like, okay, there's decent OI on the March, not so much on the June, probably a roll, but the numbers going up exceed what we see here on the, on the old screen. So clearly opening here, we saw a total of nearly 40,000, 39,000 and change here of the March 120s going up, printing a buck, uh, followed hot on his heels by the June 20, 125s going up uh, for a buck 46. 39,000 and change by 20,000, so roughly one by two. They're uh, lifting, or pretty, yeah, actually pretty much lifting the offer on the March 120s. They were offered at a buck, and they gobbled them all up for a buck, and then turning around, also kind of taking the uh, 125s in June. Pretty close to the offer there, doing about, they were about to offer at about 150, picking them up for a buck 46. Like I said, doing this 44,000 and change. By 20,000 and change on the day. OI, 12,000 and about 2,800 respectively on these two funky strikes. So we thought the last one was funky, Mr. Rock Lobster. We got an even perhaps more funky one to parse here. Let's look at a chart, see what's been going on in our old friend Bud since the last time we've talked about it. It's been a turbulent year for, uh, for the drinking fans out there. Starting the year about about 104 or so. And change getting as high back in October of around 126. So nice little rally in Bud. Then we saw a lot of that bloom coming off the rose with earnings shortly thereafter, kind of just clipping the sales, and it trended all the way down in December to about 110. Kind of been bouncing in that 110, 110 excuse me, to 113 range uh, ever since, which also makes the fact that these these are the strikes, the 120, 125. Also, all sorts of funky. I could see if maybe he had a gain or a loss on the 120s. He wanted to roll them maybe to a more relevant strike in June. That would make a heck of a lot more sense. But as I said before, this is not rolling. This is openings. Mr. Rock Lobster, if you were out there with the Prime Meridian Fund slinging the 100,000 lots as you are wont to do, and you saw this come up across your radar, what would you think of this uh, ratio calendar diagonal in Bud? You know, this is a trade type I do look at with my pro clients. One is you need portfolio margin to do it. Uh, although from a risk point of view, it's not, it's not, I'm not going to say it's not massively risky because if you, it looks like they bought the March and sold the June um, and it's kind of premium neutral, uh, but it's looking to pick up uh, a decent rally or, this also could be what I would call a takeover trade, where you buy kind of the short-term front month, you finance it with the upside uh, short calls, and if it gets taken over and they crush the Vega, you make the difference. You know, in this case, it would be five dollars forty thousand times. Uh, so there's a couple of bucks there for you. Um, so that's what this type of trade is. Usually, I look at this when the vol's sky high, where we kind of 
place a diagonal or a short diagonal trade. Um, and so my clients are pretty good at trading them. So it, you, it's kind of a conditional thing. You're waiting for, you know, a stock that could be taken over, vol that's lifting, any of that kind of stuff. Because uh, you're trying to back into the cheap front month versus the, um, and you're using kind of that higher volatility in the back to pay for your your short term options. The risk, of course, is that you get no real move in the short term, and your long options in the front kind of wither and die, and you're still short those other contracts, and you end up having to close the whole banana. So you need to have a little bit of movement in the underlying, you know, relatively early to make it work. But I think they're going to march because. I think they're uh, uh, they're giving themselves a little time for it to work out. So I, I like this as a as a strategy for you know right underlying, right vol, and right client who knows how to manage it. <laughs> there you go. We're nothing if not trade recommendations for the Prime Meridian Fund. By the way, I always hate it when I have to close the whole banana. It drives me crazy. You know, half the banana I could deal with closing the whole banana. Always frustrating. All right, listeners, if we've got you, uh, if he got you in, just uh, you're driving crazy with all these ratios and diagonals and, and crazy things. We'll at least bring it out into a different sector to start off with. Going, going to wrap things up here in Colgate Palmolive. We've been all over the place today in energy, in, uh, in the hardcore drinking land of bud and wrapping things up, keeping those teeth nice and fresh, Colgate Palmolive, and a bunch of other things that they make over there in that uh, massive conglomerate. Ticker symbol CL, of course, closing today, $73.79. Comparatively unched compared to the rest of the market, up about three-tenths of a percent. So actually not bad given the big sell-off we saw across the board. This is the name that does about 5,500 contracts a day. Today doing 33,000 and change, nearly four to one calls over puts out there. And if you didn't like all that diagonal stuff and diagonal ratios and that was messing with your brain, we'll keep it a little bit simpler to wrap it up. We're still going to have a ratio for you, though, just all in one month. So a vertical ratio, maybe that's a little bit easier for you. It was in, and also interesting of this one as well is the timing. These are pretty near term ratios. We've got the Feb. So these are Feb expiring on the second. So this week, not, not monthly Feb, the Feb expiring on the second, 74, 72, excuse me, ratio vertical going up here today. Starting off the day with a pretty decent chunk of the 74 calls expiring this week in Feb going up nearly 3000 times for 85 cents. Just uh, coming in, looks like kind of uh, maybe pounding away on those. And then coming in hot on its heels, uh, though not as a spread. These are independent trades, but they, they do have a bit of a flavor that they are perhaps related. Uh, we saw the Feb 72 calls, again, expiring this week, so the second. Uh, nearly 13,000 of those going up. An interesting little kind of pitter-patter throughout. Actually, nearly 14,000 total on the day. Uh, a little pitter-patter, 500 here, 300 there. A lot of them appear to be uh, very aggressively buying uh, but again, with those small kind of broken up executions, you never really know for certain. So that'd be a ratio of about a little over, little over 3,000 and chain, 3,700 on the 74s and nearly 14,000 on the 72s. No OI really to speak of on the 72s, but there are about 3,000 and change on the 74. So it does have at least maybe that initial block maybe has the, the whiff of perhaps closing or rolling down to it. We are hovering Right in between those strikes right now, 73.79, uh, we do have, uh, when are earnings on? Oh, we just had earnings, this name. They reported on uh, the 26th, so a little bit of a post-earnings play here in good old Cole. Usually you see these weeklies going up. We usually see these ahead of an earnings event. Usually, or essentially not often, is it a post-earnings type play. Let's go and see what the year has been like out here in uh, all things Colgate Parmalov. Kicking the year off. 64 and change, rally ho mode into the summer, getting up to about 76. Then it's kind of vacillated around, dropping back down to about 70, 69, excuse me. And they kind of vacillating between 69 and the high 70s for the better part of the last few months before getting clipped a little bit here, coming out of the earnings. Mr. Rock Lobster, interesting stuff for the timing, expiring very soon. Also interesting because this is post earnings. Usually when we see this kind of near dated, got to have it, got to get it right now type verticals. Usually it's rolling and usually it's ahead of an event or something like that. Maybe taking something off, readjusting to a more relevant strike. Not usually post earnings and not usually, uh, but and potentially opening on both strikes. So uh, funkiness abounds here. We got ratios, calendars, all sorts of funkiness here in the odd block. What's going on today, Mr. Rock Lobster? Just, just craziness. Uh, it, it is a little crazy. I, are they trying to buy? So... The earnings are crappy. The stock sells off a little bit. 
And they're buying calls in Colgate when there's like zero momentum in the stock for the whole year. So because to me, you buy calls, you know, expiring in two weeks. I think you need some momentum or or, you know, something is going to happen. Um, that's why I and I don't see any of that in Colgate at all. It's a a slippery, sudsy downward slope for this stock, it looks like. But. Maybe somebody knows something that we don't. That does have the whiff about it of this paper, does it not? Because neither of the legs by themselves really really make much sense by themselves. Except I can see maybe closing the 74s. Yeah, okay, it didn't work out super great for you. You're getting what you can for those things and getting the heck out of Dodge. I can maybe see that first block being that. But these smatterings of, uh, of 72s, they have a whiff of something else about them. And I'm not sure, quite sure what that is. But if, if it is an informed speculation, we shall see. We shall file this one in the to-be-watched category, because I am quite curious about those 72s. What is afoot on this one? We're going to put it in our to-be-watched just for this week, because we can find out pretty quickly on this one. These nice and the weekly ones are always fun, as opposed to these, you know, two-year puts and some crazy name. Uh, the weeklies are always fun, because we can find out pretty quickly whether this guy was onto something or whether he was smoking something. We shall see. Speaking of smoking something, we don't know if you guys are smoking something or not. We'll find out now, because it's Monday. It's time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, folks, mail, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to get into some of it. We also ask you guys some questions every now and then, like we did last week. We asked you, you know, I was floating around the Inside ETFs conference trying to figure out who the heck down there actually Gave a darn about options. Spoiler alert, not too many people. <laughs> but uh, that said, I thought, hey, we'd ask you last week, uh, what are your favorite ETF options to trade? Uh, gave you some nice smattering of choices. Commodity, Vol, Index, gave you SPY, GLD, VXX, and then other. You guys wrote in with all sorts of others. Some well-known like the Qs and, you know, XIBs and other, some a little more esoteric. So uh, all sorts of crazy names were written in for that one. We appreciate that. We love your suggestions uh spy dominating the charts as we kind of expected 53 percent of you like to sling some spy 17 percent the tie actually which is surprising a tie between gld and vxx for number two with only 17 percent each 13 percent going other uh we shall see this week we asked you something a little bit different we are in the teeth of earnings season uh, a lot of big tech names popping off this week so we just posted this before the show you got all week to play along if you haven't played or wrong already and we asked you, hey, you guys love to sling your tech. We see it in the questions you ask us, in the, in the comments and things you're writing. You guys love to sling options on big tech names. We got a lot of choices this week. So we asked you a nice, easy one this week. Quite simply, which of the big names are you looking forward to trading some options on this week? We gave you four choices. Amazon, good old Softy, good old Google, L, a.k.a. Alphabet, or good old Facebook, a.k.a. the land of Russian meddling. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Mr. Uncle Mike. Which of these four names would be your choice if you had one? And then B, which do you think our audience is voting for? Well, I got to go with Apple for sure. Uh, uh, but there I was mean, no we, Apple. We did that on purpose to give you, to force you to make another choice, sir. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going with <laughs> Apple. Apple all the way. I, I, I just, I'm writing it in. That's just how it goes. Uh, if there's people out there slandering me, I'm going with Apple. Uh, and in terms of who I think the audience will select, I think they're going to go with Goog L, as in Alphabet, uh, just because I've been getting a lot of talk. About, there's a lot of talk out there, it feels like, in uh, my world. So uh, I think Google is going to be what the audience is selecting. But uh, no, you, you don't get rid of Apple. This guy's getting a little too big for his britches. Going off the menu here in our first poll question of the week. What is this? You know, we, we deliberately avoid Apple to allow him not to go to his old stuff. And he still writes it in. We didn't, give, we didn't even put an other in so you can write in. No, uh, no, no others allowed this week, even though I'm sure we'll get a bunch. So we have a write-in for Apple. It's disallowed. Since he, he refused to choose, we shall choose for him. We shall give him uh, the alphabet, which he picked for the listeners. All right. And Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. Uh, I'm going uh, – Google is Go still Apple. my Go favorite stock. Me, Andrew. <laughs> Who's coming uh, with me? I know, I know. I, I, still, I still love the Google. And I think the listeners – are going to go Google too, but I have to say I own all those, so I, it's tough. It's tough at this point of this figure. Okay, it's internet, it's big, and I guess it just keeps going up as they gobble the whole universe. I, I, you get scared once they start doing some antitrust stuff, but 
Microsoft has now avoided that. Google's been through it. Facebook hasn't gone through it, and Amazon hasn't gone through it yet. But both Microsoft and Google have both already been sued. And that blunted their progress for a while. Um, so anyway, but to me, I'm still going Google. And I think the uh, the big tech name, uh, our followers are going to go look at Google too. Although, you know what? I'm going to switch to Amazon because the crowd loves Amazon. But I'm sticking with Google. So your vote is for Apple, or excuse me, Alphabet. <laughs> right uh, And you're saying the crowd's voting for Amazon. It's actually a tie, which is interesting. Uh, between uh, Amazon and good old softy Microsoft so far. Again, it's early days. We just posted those like an hour ago. So more votes will come in and skew these numbers. But in the early voting, uh, tie, 36% each for Amazon and Microsoft. Only 18% for good old Google and a whopping 10% for Facebook. No love for good old Facebook. If you guys haven't voted, you know how to do so. Head on over to at options. Make your voices heard. All right. Just like our friend here did uh, Michael Smith writing in. Uh, he wanted to know... Uh, do we have any ec recommendations, easy for me to say, on where we could find or he can find help on calculating implied moves into earnings? Well, good timing, Michael, because as it so happens, I had a bunch of data queued up. We didn't have a chance to get to it today in the trading block. I was going to save it for later this week, but I can give you a little bit of a preview now. Uh, we've talked for a while on shows like Volatility Views and even this show about just the kind of general dearth of this exact kind of data you're describing, which is, of course, you know, uh, earning straddle price moves and that sort of thing. I touched on a little bit of research that was sent our way recently by Cowan and Company on this exact topic. But when you dig into this, there really isn't a lot. You know, there's a Goldman study from like five years ago. That's really kind of the, the last big landmark study on this topic where some more people are starting to get into this. In fact, on, our, on one of our last Volatility Views programs, good old Matt Amberson over there at Orats, your buddy there, Andrew, living adjacent to your state there. He mentioned they have this data and they do this, this kind of research over there at Orats, which blew my mind because I've been asking for it for years and, and, and no one ever mentioned to me that they were doing it at Orats. Well, he finally sent me some of this data today. And it's pretty in-depth stuff. Uh, I guess we don't have time to really break it down in full here, but I think we'll do it more on Thursday show as we're talking about a lot of earnings. But they do a lot of different stuff, not just calculating the uh, you know the implied move, but also looking historically and seeing how this compares and contrasts to recent moves. They actually put out a report of undervalued names in terms of what their historical moves are versus what they're pricing in right now. I'm looking at that report right now, which is kind of interesting. It's showing a couple of names as doing as looking pretty. Uh, Pretty undervalued, including good old Hershey, ticker symbol HSY. Uh, let's see. And they have this this number. They come out in this report called the adjusted straddle price, which is about two and a quarter. And they're pricing in about a buck more than that right now, 320. So uh, they're pricing more than kind of what they're uh, actually, excuse me, pricing less than what they're expecting it to move. And there's all kinds of they have it by same quarter moves of the past year. So every first quarter, what happens, they have it the past year. So just the last you know calendar year from that, the actual moves and an averages expected implied may even do a little cool thing they call inspected uh, implied after earnings. So they actually can try to price in what kind of the straddle premium is now, and then subtracting what they expect the straddle to be after earnings. So really kind of how much straddle juice there is baked in there versus how much is actually kind of what really should be there. So a lot of cool data sets there. I will point this out, Mr. Rock Lops. There's a lot of names on this list. eBay uh, coming in here. They're, they're pricing in, let's see, they're projecting according to their analysis at Orat's about two and a quarter and they're pricing in about a buck 84. So it's looking underpriced there. Also your old friend, we just talked about softy. Uh, they're pricing in or they're projecting according to recent moves and things like that. The Orat's calculation, they're about $4 and 30 cents and they're pricing in about $3 and 70 cents right now. So who, when's the last time we said that Microsoft actually underpriced from an earnings volatility perspective, but uh, they have been moving a lot of late. So Perhaps uh, some names to check. If you want to get this report for yourself, I think you probably have to be uh, some sort of ORAT subscriber. But head on over there, O-R-A-T-S dot com. Tell them we sent you. And uh, here you go. I'm sure he'll may, he may, may make a lot of this available on their website just for free access as well. I don't, I don't know how deep. Maybe the undervalued report you have to pay for it, but the other stuff you might be able to get. Uh, but in general, that's a good place to go because they have a lot of this. Data. You need someone who has this kind of historical data that they can crunch for. A lot of brokers will give you this kind of thing, too, but nowhere near this level of detail. They'll show you kind of what the earnings straddle is and what kind of projected move that is. They'll do the basic math for you. And that's kind of about it. Uh, I don't know a lot of others that will really go to this you know, next level and kind of graph it all out for you. But still pretty cool stuff. I don't know, Andrew, and obviously you know Matt pretty well. Uh, what are your thoughts on this kind of data? And do you have any other recommendations for where people could go to get this kind of thing? Um, I, I do I do like Matt. He does, does a good job at collecting the data. 
you know, my again, Microsoft is what is it? 14, 14 quarters in a row where the <laughs> you could buy the so you could buy the near the money strangle three weeks before earnings and it's paid every single yeah, time. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a good good trader of late. <laughs> and now it's and now it's a ninety four dollar stock. I mean, Microsoft could be up or down five dollars. Dare, easy. I, say, dare it's I a small move? Dare I say it has a high delta of outperforming for earnings? Lest we haven't it, it yeah, does. Lest we haven't so, offended Don enough. So there is, you know, there is something to these, but, you know, I, I think it's one of those where you kind of have to do a lot of them um, to to make it work. Uh, Live Vault does have some earnings stuff on their platform as well. So it is out there. And another for person that's just trying to figure out what the implied vol is, I mean, the liquidity provider guess is where the straddle is. That's where the market is guessing. Vol itself does not mean a tremendous amount on that weekly uh, earnings. I mean, it's just, you know, there's an expected earnings percentage and where is that straddle relative to that? So they're all going to be very high. Most of the values actually, if you go four to five weeks after earnings and see really if that those options are either undervalued or overvalued, that's where I think most of, at least the way I look at the vol trading earnings, that's where the, the bargains will be or if uh, they've just mispriced earnings, an earnings term totally. That's another place. So that is, I, I remember market having pretty good earnings uh, data as well. That was another one, uh, but not a cheap platform. But those are, I, it's always stuff I look at when we cover tonight our Go Lab a little bit to see if there's any cheapy bargains around. Uh, I think there is some um, and setting up trades around that. So again, as long as you don't size it, uh, crazy like, um, I think there is, uh, there are some, there are some bargains to be had and it does help you look for what could be cheaper. And again, I like that pre earnings play, especially in a bull market, um, that there, there is something there to that because you're getting, you're getting your juice for near free. And anytime you can do that is generally a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Not, like I said, I wanted I want to get Matt on to kind of discuss. He was just on our Ballview show a couple of weeks ago, and that's that's kind of where this data came from. He told me, "Hey, I have that data." And I said, "Well, you should send it to me." <laughs> so, uh, so he did, and so I want to get him on to maybe break it down one of these days and kind of explain kind of where they get all this from, how it works, you know, what the utility of it is, what these some of these numbers actually mean for some people who may be confused by the terminology there. But it is pretty interesting stuff, and this is kind of what you want. You want someone who has access to the historical data, and they will crunch it for you rather than have you could go do this yourself. But it is a laborious and time-consuming type of thing, and getting access to the data in any sort of cost-efficient way is not exactly easy or inexpensive. So if you have someone out there willing to do it for you and do a nice little analysis for you, then uh, it's worthwhile. So check them out, O-R-A-T-S dot com. A little plug for uh, Matt's uh, stuff there because he's, he's got good stuff. I like, I like when people are out there doing this, uh, doing this analysis because it's surprisingly little, even though everyone keeps asking us the same questions every quarter, every earnings season. What's going to go on with uh, this name? Who's pricing too much? Who's pricing too little? How do these straddles stack up? You get this question time and again, and yet the number of people out there actually crunching those numbers is surprisingly few. Uh, so now we can add uh, the folks over there at Orats to the list. All right. Let's see how we doing on time here. That one, uh, these are some these are some lengthy questions. Um, let's see. This is a lengthy one. Which the Greeks? Uh, these are all pretty. Uh, these are all pretty involved here. I don't think we have time for uh, for more. Like, what's the best advice? Whatever. That's 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 lengthy. Uh, so instead, I think we'll keep on rolling. Good questions. Uh, they took a little longer on that data one. That's such a fun topic to talk about because I know so many of you guys are interested in. So we'll keep on rolling right now into our final segment. It is time for around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, it is Around the Block time, the time when we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week into the weekend. Mr. Rock Lobster just uh, pointing out a, a good fact, which is uh, fixed cash pretty much closing on the offer, the high of the day. That's always an interesting sign. 1384 right there. So, uh, yes, fairly, fairly aggressive move. Out there in VIX Cash, I'm making my prognostication involve you is looking ever farther away, ever more remote. But you know what? We got a whole week. 
it could easily get crushed by a third or so by that time. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed for that as we check in with Uncle Mike. You mentioned, of course, Uncle Mike, the State of the Union, and all that other fun stuff. What else is on your radar this week, sir, besides Apple earnings, which are, just to remind you, have already taken place? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this guy is Uncle I, I think the State of the Union, at least for me, is the big thing that I'm watching, as well as just market movement during the day tomorrow. Uh, we had a really big move in volatility today. Uh, with the S&P creeping ever so closely to all-time highs yet again, but still uh, obviously ending the day uh, down on the day. So uh, in looking at it, we had uh, quite a bit of moves today, but uh, most of it to the downside. So it'll be interesting to see if we get some type of a recovery tomorrow uh, or uh, maybe we saw the top on Friday. Interesting. The Palmer Bowl. Slowly breaking, listeners. So we shall see. If uh, the, you already mentioned how he kind of dumped out of all his premium and SPX and SBY, so he's pretty much a bear right now, as far as everything I could tell. Right, Uncle Mike. Uh, for me, it, it's kind of being bear. So our risk managers used to say on expiration Friday for doing closeouts, if Google is two dollars out of the money, it's in the money today. So I would say for me, I'm less bullish so that's bearish for me if that makes any sense that is that is very bearish for you i would say you're being less bullish perhaps a note of caution listeners perhaps the canary in the coal mine is indeed uncle mike mr rock lobster are you sharing that sentiment and what is what is on your radar this week sir i just these these uh the big tech earnings that are going to come out um i'm i think that and the state of the union uh are both they're big. Uh, I, I think they're the short-term drivers, at least for the vol. They're at least for the market doing its thing. Uh, can the tech earnings be as good as the market wants them to be? I think that's the question. So you've got, I mean, on Thursday you have Alibaba, Apple, Amgen, Amazon, and Google. Uh, on Wednesday, eBay, Facebook, Microsoft, and AT and T, or as we used to say, phone. Um, Exxon on the second. So I just, I think there is just a, there's just, they're huge. There's huge earnings coming out. Um, and, you know, can this, these big gains be sustained? Um, and then we'll see some kind of rocking and rolling. You are dating yourself there, sir, with your, uh, with your phone reference. <laughs> that is, uh, that is for the old school out there. Uh, your telephone. But that music listeners means we have come to the end of another epic journey through the world of options. I look at the poll numbers here, moving fast and furious. I think we've, we've swayed them, piling into Amazon now. 44% choosing Amazon now for what they want to trade for this week. That's surprising. A lot of Amazon love out there. It, it is perhaps the new Netflix, or should I say, the new, the new Tesla, dare I say, in terms of its heat of late. But we got all week to vote. Get out there if you haven't done so already. Add options on Twitter to make your voice heard. And before we go... Let's hear their voices one last time. See what's cooking for them. That may interest you. Let's start in the land of all things soothing and tranquil, a.k.a. Uncle Mike land. Uncle Mike, what's cooking in your neck of the woods, sir? Well, if you would like to have a financial advisor that actually gets concerned when we get to new all-time highs and tries to have caution and uh, try and look out for your best interest as opposed to a financial advisor that just says, oh, we're killing it. We need to just put more money in it every second we possibly can. Well, give me a call. I like to exercise caution when we're at the tops. Uh, I'm long-term bullish, short-term cautious. So uh, give me a call if you have concerns about where this market's going. 312-212-3531 or shoot me an email at mtosaw at rcmfs.com. But Uncle Mike, I don't know if you know this, but I have smart beta, so I'm all set. I don't have that regular beta that everybody else. I have smart beta, so I'm, I'm hedged. Does that count? You know, what beta? That's what like those uh, those videotapes that they used to have in the '80s that were a little bit shorter yes, than the uh, other yes, ones. Yes, exactly. I have the smart videotapes from the '80s. That's, that's exactly. Got it. That's exactly <laughs> what I have. Yeah, if I heard the if I had could count on on many hands the number of times I heard that last week of the inside ETFs. A little interesting, perhaps a little alarming as well. <laughs> a lot of a lot of funds going to ride this market up and ride it right back down. But hey, they got smart beta, so they're not worried. All right, Mr. Rock Lobster, take us home, sir. What is cooking in the land of all things VIX made extraordinarily difficult? Uh, VIX made easy, still available at optionpit.com for purchase. Uh, definitely worth the 99 bucks you're going to spend because you'll actually understand how it works. Uh, VXX made easy coming out. My vol newsletter will be coming out 
which I decided to include 30 minutes of group mentoring. So you've got questions about vol, being able to walk through vol trades. Um, if you if you sign up for the newsletter, and you don't learn how to trade vol after six months. You'll probably have some serious problems and you shouldn't do it anyway. So but I think you will. <laughs> and I think you like it. So to reiterate, spend the money. If it doesn't work for you, then you are an idiot, says uh, says the Rock Lobster. There you go. Good marketing. I love it, sir. Surf on over to OptionBit.com. If you, too, are an idiot or perhaps not, and you, too, can enjoy benefit from their, uh, from their wisdom. And on behalf of the Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike, I would never call you guys idiots. I know you guys are all geniuses out there. And indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, sending questions, all the fun stuff that you do, not just during showtime, but throughout the week. We do love hearing from you guys. And we'll see you back here on Thursday for more of The Option Block. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 